Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and uh, we are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Uh, Insatiable, the new Netflix original series, is a dark, twisted revenge comedy where I think, honestly, like nearly every character on the show finds themselves desperately trying to fill some kind of void within. Over the course of the show, learning what they're chasing, why, how far they're willing to go, and occasionally what happens once they get it is what makes this one of the more rewarding binge-worthy experiences out there. Uh, it drops this Friday, August 10th on Netflix. Here to tell us all about it. Creator and writer Lauren Gussis is here and stars Debbie Ryan, Alyssa Milano, and Dallas Roberts are in the house. How about that, guys? How do we feel about that particular group of people? I'm excited to talk to them. We'll bring them out uh, in just a second, but first, I believe we have a, a trailer for the show, so let's go ahead and run that clip. This story is full of some crazy That's what makes it so fun. Insatiable came about as a script that made me feel seen and heard and made me laugh, but also felt very much congruent with the stories I wanted to be making. I feel so free. No, I was gonna say totally self-conscious. Oh, thank God, me too. I think in media, everything is accessible. Ew. And Lauren has created this vehicle for us to courageously, with a sense of humor, talk about anything, and this doesn't Sound crazy to you when you say it out loud? There's such a conviction within the DNA of it, I found to be irresistible. And the beauty of the show is that it's about finding yourself and it's a little tongue in cheek, doesn't take itself too seriously. This is like every great high school movie ever made. For me, it was important to do it as a comedy, but also it needs to be rooted in real human emotion. I might be skinny on the outside, but on the inside, I'm still fatty patty. That's the thing that's tricky about the show because there are moments of broad comedy and also some moments where you cry. God, could you be more self-involved? I cried watching the show, and I hope the audience will cry too. Sometimes other people see things in you that you can't see for yourself. We all have a fear of being alone or a fear of being forgotten, and I think people will see this the same way that I did and say I'm not alone. Be the most you you can be. Insatiable could be anything, and I think in every single episode it looks different, and you'll find it in a different place. Well, I want to punch her in her bitch face. Insatiable is hunger. It's the profound emptiness down deep in your soul that is impossible to satisfy. Oh, oh my God, write that down. It's really about good people who are making bad decisions based on that hole in them. I figured that if I could share that pain in a way that was funny and identifiable, I was hoping that people would feel less alone. Oh, goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Debbie Ryan, Alyssa Milano, Lauren Gustafson, and Dallas Roberts. Please keep going. Okay. Talk about oh, Debbie, it. we were talking about it. Hang on a second. <laughs> So there was some commotion behind us. It's a little really bit embarrassing. Of there, there's all this, these paparazzis. I don't know if you guys can get a shot of all these paparazzis, and they were focused on something. And I said, Debbie, turn around. And, and who was it, Debbie? Who was, there was, you're shaking. I've never reacted this way about anything, and I'm, uh, I, you know what? I'm not even embarrassed. I just no. own it. <laughs> it's Becca Cooper and The Bachelor and her new fiance. Right. The Bachelorette and her new fiance, and I loved her since our season, and I she's been. Number one in my heart. Totally I don't know how to talk guys. about it. She's so poised and thoughtful, and watching her love journey was unreal. <laughs> whatever, oh. whatever. What well, oh. we're gonna when we're done, I'm just you're just hanging out here. You're gonna stay on this stage. No, and you're no I don't want to. Debbie's crying right now. If she comes in, because she's probably someone's gonna tell her that I'm being weird right now about you're not her. Being yeah. weird. She, I, I think she feels building. it. I think she feels it. She's gonna so leave. Fine. You're gonna make her leave. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. First of all, and one, I love your your level of passion and your fandom and your devotion and your openness. You're being so vulnerable with us right now. I only know Talk one way to be. How much you love. <laughs> Uh, the, the Bachelor and The Bachelor. <laughs> Are you in for the whole series, Bachelor in Paradise, the whole nine, or is it specifically this? I'm sorry, it's, I won't spend the whole show. <laughs> but you okay. have to. We could. No, it's great. It's, it's, great. Fascinating. it's it's also fascinating to me uh, when we were filming. Yes. Arden Marine, who plays Regina Sinclair, ha, ha, who has a podcast about The Bachelor, was like, "You have to watch it. I want you on the podcast." Yeah. And I was like, "I why would I watch that?" And then I watched one episode and I haven't stopped and my life has changed. My goodness. <laughs> so because, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was interesting. Yeah, I, I like it. And it's, it's really cool and 
and interesting to kind of follow and get into the like lore of it all. And it's well, it's it's, it's totally fun. serendipitous that you would be here at the same time as they're being uh, coming into the show, and I'm so happy. Yes, yes, we did. Actually, this whole Surprise! thing. Yeah, I told you on episode nine. I haven't even heard of this show. This whole thing was to get you here when they. No, I'm kidding. Um, let's. It's cool to feel this way. I've I've never experienced. I you know being on this side of it. It's yeah. it's cool to see reactions and people reacting to people that I love and know and respect this way and watching people react to the people that I love. I've never like experienced this really like and and I get heart. it now. Yeah, and it's a totally it's a it. real awareness. Well, Do you think it's going to change how you treat people that shake when they see you? I always just kind of hug people because I don't know what to say. I don't know what to t talk to other than like this is awesome. I'm glad to meet you too. And so, you know, I don't know. I don't know how she reacts to weird, weird experiences. Well, like if, this, if but you know, two ships passing in the night. When, when, if we can arrange a meeting and you are vibrating as you embrace, just take note <laughs> of however she plays it, right? And I will that, do and what she does. And you'll learn yeah. from there. Um, thank you for indulging uh, and being open and honest about your love for that. Let's glad we talk. let's talk about another uh, another fantastic show. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, as I said a couple of times, I'm, I'm a bunch of episodes in. The show is crazy. Uh, it is such a, a, a crazy ride and, and uh, an achievement on your part. It's great. Are you excited? We're so close to, to the 10th. People are going to actually finally get to see this show. Uh, what are you thinking in the run-up to the big release? How are you feeling? I'm excited for the conversations that will come after people have seen the show what are you excited for how are you feeling Lauren I mean you want me to start yeah I, I'm just excited for people to see the actual show yeah yeah you know right. I mean it's been this it was in development for like three years before we actually made wow. the pilot so it's been my I mean I have an actual baby like a walking breathing <laughs> human being but like it's been my other baby yeah. and I loved it so deeply for so long it was like the one thing no matter how many things I developed I always was like this is the one this is the passion project because every time I worked on it it was the only thing I had ever worked on where I felt pure joy mm. and so I knew like this is something is good here mm. you know I was I was reading it's not only uh, uh it brought you great joy, of course, but you have referenced points and, and fantasies you even had as yourself as a teenager. Yes, uh, of course. I mean, it, it. listen, the show's a comedy, so it, it brought me joy to be processing that through. And I think the intended arc of this season was, you know, largely um, emotionally connected to my personal experience, of course. Um, but yes, it did bring me joy because it was pure. Right? That's why. Not because, you know, it's fun to talk about the pain. But on some level, it is fun to talk about the pain in a way that makes me laugh. Yeah. That's where I found connection and healing around my own disordered eating. Right. There's a catharsis there, right? You get to sort of it's see... It's alchemy. It's, it's, it's like, it, poof, different. And you get to changed. kind of take that alternate reality, that alternate road that you never took, and you sort of get to experience it and watch it unfold before you. And well, I'm sure also, that... like, Pat, the characters in the show, they're, they're rooted in reality in terms of the fact that they're all insatiable. They all have an actual... Um, void they have a hole to fill yeah. right and so but they're they're mostly good people who do bad things in search of filling that void and I think it's funny to watch people behave badly yeah. um, and so for me the joy came in like I, I worked on Dexter for a long time and I was not in charge and I would be the person that pitched all the crazy stuff mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't um, and this script was I'm gonna do all the crazy stuff that I haven't been able to do before because it's fun and because it lets us air out the stuff that, totally. um, and the show was always meant to be fun and a commentary as a satire, yeah. you know? And I, I do think there's a fun way to address real issues so that when you're done, you're like, oh, that was really fun. And then you start thinking yeah. and then a conversation starts and then you realize you were laughing because you, me, I realized I was laughing because I identified and then why did I identify? Right. Um, and then I feel uncomfortable, but in a good way, as opposed to uncomfortable in the way of like, we're having a very heavy conversation and I feel like I have to be intellectual about it or I feel like I have to say the right thing. Yeah. You don't have to say the right thing. I've already said all the wrong things on purpose. Yeah. So we can open it up and make everybody comfortable. Get, yes, we're gonna like just be a little bit emotionally naked and talk about it. You know? I love the idea of you introducing the crazy idea in the Dexter writing room. Like, like what's within that context? What <laughs> oh, is that? Yeah. No, we um, put the fun and dysfunctional yeah. in that room for sure. Uh, Debbie, uh, Alyssa Dallas, you know, uh, talking about putting the work in, and, and we've said this a bunch of times, every character is chasing something. There is a void they're trying to fill. They all have something they're working towards for themselves. Did you guys, uh, did you get together and put in the work and did you sort of talk about your character's individual struggles and see where the Venn diagram kind of over Overlapped, or was it more like a personal, isolated uh, character journey when you started kind of building up and getting ready for this? 
Um, yeah. I think instead of an overlap for me, in the initial read of Patty, you know, as, as actors, when we get the script for a series, we get the first episode of a script. So uh, being able to speak with Lauren definitely informed the arc of everything. But initially what it was, was I liked this girl. And I liked her because the things that I didn't like about myself were very visible in her. And I was able to be like, oh, same, me. <laughs> and then those kind of, those similarities shine through. And that was a really nice thing because then as things start to evolve and we get to know one another and be candid and have this amazing safe space to go into those places and bring that to, you know, who we are, yeah. it can also be informed by the books we read, the podcasts we listen to, the conversations that we have and the articles that we read in doing research for the character. You get there, you go through this story with this person and I'm, I'm angry on Patty's behalf. I'm, I'm angry about the lies that I was fed by culture and the media that affected me the way that they did. And I'm angry at myself for letting that yeah. happen. And you know, I think being able to see that and, and move forward, just she and I were the same person. And I think we all found the similarities within conversation. Yeah, and I think I think for I think for me, I was so used to having uh, a season actually mapped out before you started the season, so I knew where a character started and and where we had to go. But with Lauren, I had no idea, so I couldn't wait to get the scripts mm -hmm. the episode before because I was like, where where is she gonna go now? And it was actually a a, a great way to do it character-wise because she was discovering, I was discovering things about her as she was discovering them about herself. That's really exciting. So it was really exciting to do. And I've never been so excited to read the next mm -hmm. episode's yeah. script as I was when I did the show. I mean, I couldn't wait to get the new scripts to find out what the characters were doing. And most of the time I was reading them like, oh, holy, <laughs> yeah. are you kidding me? This is amazing, you know? Yeah. yeah, I just had that moment as a viewer. I mean, that's happened several times. And one of the big ones comes towards the end of the season, uh, season episode nine into 10. Is there a moment that stands out that you remember reading through? Like, I can't believe we're doing this. This is a crazy turn. I can't believe we're going this way. Or I can't no believe spoilers, we're going No spoilers, guys. No spoilers. No yeah, spoilers. We can talk about that teaser. Saturday after people yeah, yeah. have binge watched watched everything. I don't, uh, this is a silly <laughs> question to ask because obviously I don't want the spoiler, but I was wondering like, do you remember like episode four blew your mind or something sure. like that? You know what I mean? Like I, a, a tease it happened time everything. and time again with the script because they are so rooted in uh, like real people and real lines, but they are also rooted in this madness <laughs> that you at least once an episode you would go, oh, mm -hmm. and then exactly. once every three or four, you'd go, oh, 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 and then <laughs> once or twice, you would literally like light your house on fire and run around <laughs> and put it back out. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> you must be so proud. <laughs> um, we, we talked a lot uh, about the development, about the personal nature, and it sounds like you, uh, Debbie, were definitely connecting, and you guys all found this connection. I imagine all of you have read your fair share of scripts. Is there something immediately apparent when you get a work where somebody has, has so obviously poured themselves into it and it's be, been a labor of love. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, every pilot season read, and I'm an avid reader and I'll read 20 pilots a pilot season. And um, this was the one that stuck out to me that pilot season where I was like, that's an amazing show. Yeah. Like you could just read it from her words. And normally, um, uh, that doesn't really happen because there's so many elements that have to go into making it a, a success. Yeah. But we were already starting at an advantage because of Lauren's script. I, uh, this is not a joke. I read the script. I was so blown away by it and I sort of set about trying to get it. And then as part of the audition process, I finally went to LA and Lauren was in the room. And I was like Debbie was with The Bachelorette. I was, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's her. I better get my stuff together, you know, like, for real. It's pretty amazing. Did you wanna? Yeah, I think um, there's, uh, there's checking all the boxes and there's, I'd like to work with people who inspire me. Oh, I'm a really big fan of the past things that they've done. I, you know, want a girl who's very dimensional and who is her own hero and who is her battling her things. I love a sense of humor. It checked all the boxes, but there was also such a visible magic, which yeah. 
I we use the word magic within describing the show because it is in the DNA of how every part of the process has come about. And I think that you will see that it's it's such a lightning in a bottle. And and I was, you know, I was like, I'm not gonna do TV for a while. I don't want to be on a series for a while. I'm gonna go project by project. And everyone who had read it was like you have to read this, like read this. It's TV, but this is what you've been saying you've wanted to do, but all of it in one place, read it. And I read it and I was like, I need Patty. One. Yeah, I was like, I need her. One. She is me, we are therapy, we're going to laugh about it together and I wanna go on this journey with her. And then in the casting process, uh, towards the end, Lauren and I met and spoke in the room and I went in and I was like, I think that there's comedy here. And she was like, right, I wrote a comedy. And I was like, <laughs> good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's really good. It was you. <laughs> she was like, that's what it was. And I was like, of course. Sorry, I guess it, it just was resonating with me as, you know, yeah. topically it kind of was like, oh, wow, pretty crazy, pretty intense. And I was very much insatiable within that process. And then within the discussion of comedy, I was automatically got a little protective of Patty and was like, I've never seen some of these things and some of the things that you're describing, places you want to go, I haven't seen. And it's hard conversation for me and my friends to have and to find ourselves in. And once we do, there's so much breakthrough and so much healing. So I just want to be careful that we're doing this in a way that is respectful yeah. and that everyone retains their dignity in feeling seen and exposed. And, um, and she began to open up about why and how she was doing it with respect and but with said, dignity. And she was like, the call is coming from inside the house. Yeah, I, said, like, I said, no, no, trust me, I'm protective of her too, she's me. Yeah. And yeah. then we had this moment where it's like, how is she you? And I said some things and then Debbie said some things and then we both cried and then I was like, oh. And I, I was like, her. well now I have to go audition even though I have mascara on my face, you know, and I did. And, and I was like, oh God. It's like, kind <laughs> of like, it's, it's kind of, it, it's hard to describe for people that haven't seen it yet and yeah. we lived it for such a long time. So if I could just make sort of an analogy. Um, uh, you know when you're in those those super powerful moments, whether it be a, with a friend or a family member or your mother or whatever whatever it is, and you're in those super powerful or a husband, and and there are issues that you're talking about that are really really serious, and and maybe life changing, and there's something that happens where your nervous system has like nervous laughter. That's what the show is. The show is the nervous <laughs> laughter around the tough the tough conversations. And it's such a relief when that happens, which is why there was so happens. much joy in the process. Well, uh, you know? let's, I want to ask you about the We're process leaving. because watching this, I've, I'm sorry, Dallas, were you going to say that? No, no, no. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was watching this show and, and you know, when you make a comedy, comedy inherently it requires risks on the, on the part of the performer, on the part of the writer. That, that's how you find the, the humor. You take those risks on set. Was it, uh, or it sounds like these, these conversations you were having remedied a lot of that, but w was it scarier to take those risks or was it harder to, to calibrate and figure out which risks to take to find the comedy or no? You guys no because she was the best safety net ever she kept it super super consistent I mean it's always scary because with these juicy characters that she created we're all straddling this line of being like totally inappropriate and totally incredibly grounded and yeah. and real so in which direction in which moment are we going to feed and to have Lauren be so sensible and, and realistic about the, the journey and the arc and the trajectory of the entire season, she was the, I call her the best safety net yeah. there is. And it, it just enabled us to be so much better because we were able to take risks and not worry about them failing because Lauren was there to say, yeah, let's bring it back a little or go for it a little bit more. It was different in the writer's room. Like we had to decide, yeah. like that, that was a little bit different. And I would go in there and I'd be like, I have this idea. <laughs> is it good? Like, is it too far, not too far? Like, I think it's, because a lot of the times I feel like it's either great or terrible and we should never do it. Like, it's I very rarely is it like down the middle. Yeah. And so we would have to have those conversations about sometimes it's both and let's just do it. Or sometimes yeah. it's like, yeah, but I had a group of really amazing people in my writer's room who were also like a great compass for me and who um, we all kind of sat in the room and came up with all of this craziness together. Yeah. And, uh, that was the place where, we, like, there were a couple of things, like episode nine, for example. Um, we were like, there was like a, a moment <laughs> yeah. where we were like, are we gonna do this? Like, this actually makes sense in the context of what's happening. Right. Are we gonna do this? And we we're like, 
let's do it. And all of my writers kept expecting me to come in and be like, you guys, we can't do this. <laughs> like at some point in the process, and we just did it. And in fact, everyone at Netflix was, has been super supportive of that stuff. They're like, we read it and it works and we can't believe that you all pulled that off. Like it's, it's been a remarkable journey of like, let's just see. Like, yeah. And also the ability to say like, this is too far. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes midstream, we'd have to be like, this is too much and we have to adjust and find the way Both through. Be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd also just like to add, doing anything um, with Dallas Roberts <laughs> Is <laughs> makes makes you better. That's true. That's ridiculous. Thank you. Though. Literally makes you better, um, because of because the extent in which he takes the risk, yeah. you feel like a wimp if you don't go there with him. So so there is constantly this this I I I want to I want to do better for for him because he's doing so well in this yeah. scene. I have to live up to that. I have to be on. I have to share a screen with that man. Yeah. That, and, that's true. And, yeah. And it's also, if I can tell a story that's not a spoiler, no. the ability to just like go there, there was one night when we were shooting the pilot that like things just weren't going the way that they needed to go. Like people were tired. It was just, it was one of those nights. And at the very end, there's a scene in a pilot, in the pilot where, where Dallas's character falls out a window and he decided to do the stunt himself. No. And Dallas Roberts fell out a window and the night was saved. Like it made it actually made everything okay. Like universally for me, for my co-producers, for the crew. Like it just was kind of an amazing thing that happened. You guys are gonna make really me good cry. Good analogy from the entire <laughs> for the entire show. Yeah, and I think Dallas, yeah, Dallas Roberts Dallas jumped Roberts. out a window Through and everything, everything was, was okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I really think so. I think, and in the context and speaking to working with Dallas especially, I mean, all of us were just turning ourselves inside out and being like, here you go. And because everyone was doing that, I would find myself in the middle of a conversation where I would be like, wow, I guess that I met someone a month ago and now they know about my darkest damage. So I guess we're just casually talking about it while I'm halfway through a jello cup. Like I, ju I just, we're talking about, you know what I mean? I think that like being able to have and create that safe space where you know it's it's intentional and it's so tactful from a writer point of view. And by the time we have seen the scripts and put our eyes on them, they have gone through such dimension and and craftsmanship. But then by the time we get to play, yeah. and and speaking to every department uh, between costumes and hair, and makeup and props, and everyone showed up and cared and wanted to laugh and wanted to not avoid things to be safe and no one was turning in something that was fine. Yeah. Everyone was going there and like she said, great or terrible, we were all feeling the feelings and doing the thing and within conversation with Dallas is, you know, it's so sharpening and you find yourself kind of safe and able to go to those places which then I think enables more of that. Yeah. And sometimes it takes being unsafe to go there. Yeah. Well, uh, we, I, we're going to go in a little bit to the audience. We do have some questions, but I did also have a clip uh, of the three of you at work. And there's a, I mean, a lot of the comedy, not only from just being unsafe, but comes from the interplay between the characters and the tension between the little glances and the little side comments and the double entendres. So we've got a great little quick moment that uh, we're going to take a look at from the show real quick, and then we'll, we'll get over to our audience. Let's take a peek. What are you doing? Stretching Patty out. I'm super tight. You look really loose to me. We are getting her in shape for the Miss Oki Finoki Swamp pageant. It's the last pageant before Miss Magic Jesus, and Patty needs a win to qualify. Well, you are out of luck. There's a mosquito outbreak in northern Florida. Zika, West Nile, it's all over the news. Wait, what? We can't wait a whole other year. I really want this. There has to be another way to get me qualified. Let me think. Straddle, lean to me. All right, you know what? Maybe you could think somewhere else. Preferably not in public and not with her face in your general groin area. Why did you buy us a gym membership if you didn't want me to use it? Oh, Bob. <laughs> uh, all right, we're going to take some uh, questions from our audience. We've got microphones in the room. Let's go ahead. The first one is coming to us from right here. Hi. First of all, I just want to say, Debbie, I'm a really big fan of yours, and I'm really excited for the show. So my question is... I know Debbie kind of answered this already, but do you guys like relate to your character on an emotional level? In any way? What's your name? Danielle. Hey, Danielle. Nice to meet you. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely. And I think as we all got to kind of connect with our characters, Lauren got to then find things within our voices and our personalities. And so while on the dark issues, I connect in ways that I've never shown the world before and being able to speak super candidly and openly about my dysmorphia and places I've gone and being able to move from that Patty and I relate because we have similar senses of humor and we both love wearing chucks with skirts. Like it's, there's something about just like her DNA, like this is a girl that I, I know. And even the, the things where when she feels hurt, she lashes out and is mean to the people that she loves the most. Like, sorry if that's a spoiler, but I've done that. That's, that's a really relatable thing and not a thing that you wanna tell people. It's not a thing I'm proud of. It's not a thing Patty's proud of, but I think, you're able to kind of relate in all of the ways, or at least I was. Yeah, for sure. And I think for me, I mean, Cora Lee is very different than Alyssa. She talks like this and she's got, got very high hair and very long nails. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a moment where I was like, okay, what is it about this woman that I'm gonna be able to personally connect with? Cause I'm not good enough to play roles that I don't feel an emotional connection to. I, I'm just not that good of an actress. Like I have to actually feel it. And, um, and for me, it was where she is in her life. Her kids are growing up, um, which means that, you know, her last child will be out of the house soon. And she's trying to find herself and what it means to, to be a woman that's not raising kids and not just being a wife, but what does she want? And what does she want to feel fulfilled? Um, to feel fulfilled. And I think that I related to that aspect of, of who she is. She's also super nurturing which I love about her. I mean, she goes to the neighbor's house and she irons his shirt. Um, and that's just who she is, you know? And I think that's really beautiful to be that, that person that wants to take care of everybody. It is you, that is you, just yeah. you. you are that's that the part I relate to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're gonna get some more, but real quick, Dallas, I'm curious, man, for your perspective, like we see Dallas and Corley go through, uh, I go through a lot. <laughs> and based on what I just watched, they're gonna go through a lot more. <laughs> what, uh, what is it that, Makes it work. Guys, I'm telling you, you're going to watch this show. You have to get in on the joke, you guys. Yeah, it's That's wild. Like, if really there's do. anything you have to walk away from, it's the fact that, like, everyone snickering after that clip that was kind of looking around like, we're allowed to laugh at that? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> get ready. <laughs> yeah. My, my question is, like, in your head, what makes it work? They, they, so far, I've seen they, they keep finding a way that they're, they're very committed to one another no matter what they go through. What, what is it that keeps pulling them back together? What was that for you that you were holding on to? Well, I mean, the simple answer is love. Do you know, like, uh, unashamed, and uh, w what's that word for there are no um, unconditional love? Thanks, the writer. <laughs> Good with the words. Um, uh, I, when you love someone with your whole self, and then these, uh, the problems that arise, uh, there's no sort of question about sort of getting out of it. Um, you just mold yourself and the relationship around that love rather than your expectations. And I think that goes for his uh, relationship with Patty as well. That's beautiful. Thank you for Thanks. that, Dallas. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few more. Let's go to the microphone in the room right here, please. Hi, Debbie. My name is Hillary. And first of all, I just want to say thank you so much because you've been a huge inspiration to me and role model for my whole life. So thank you for that. Thank and then thank also, like, what advice would you give to an aspiring actress? Like, I know it's a super general question. Yeah, um, I mean, I've only had about 10 years of doing it consistently and successfully, so I might sh share the responsibility on this one. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I think only do things that you believe in. I think uh, as I was growing and finding myself as a girl and finding myself within this career, this, this hobby that I never dreamed could be a career, but I always hoped could support me, uh, and then realizing that I could make this happen. And it was always driven by conviction. You know, at no point, I think, if, if you look at something and you're like, I don't know, I guess I'll just do this because I have to, you know, it's, I think you're, you're robbing yourself of an opportunity to do something that you really connect to. And I think finding myself as a girl, it's like dating or picking your friends. It's like, d does, does this make me better? Like, am I surrounded by people that are sharpening me and that are cool and then continuing to 
to do that and look for that. And, and that means like listening to podcasts from actors that you like. That means, you know, looking at your favorite movies and wondering why they're your favorite movies and then getting into that. And also we live in a digital, like right now, if there's a character that you wanna play or a story that you wanna tell, write the story, put it on your camera, your phone probably has one, and then you can put it on YouTube. I mean, like there are so many ways now that we can begin to make our dreams come true. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I would just say, study, study, study. Like any other craft, um, even if you're not going to school to be an actress, if that's what you want to do, just study people, because so much of acting is about, you know, seeing how people interact, how people move, how people smile and shake their heads when other people are talking. Um, so just, just like anything else, like anything else you would want to do in your life, you got to study. And I would say, just at the end. Uh, um, when you're a kid, like a little kid, you can pretend like that. You can just go. And as you grow up, society, the world sort of beats that out of you and says like that those sort of flights of fantasy aren't sort of good for you. Um, reject all of that and stay as sort of young and alive as you can for as long as you can. How, uh how do you guys manage to do that? How do you stay alive? And how do you keep that flight of fantasy going? And, and how do you keep that fire burning? It's rigorous work. Yeah. It really is. Like, it's not, um, I don't know. It's difficult to be an adult and play a child's game really, really hard. Do you know? Like, <laughs> but I think that's I'm an right. athlete at remaining open and hurting in yeah. public. It's weird. It's a weird job. But you make it, it look easy. I can he, tell you that's that. so true. <laughs> you do. But I, I do think that that's why uh, a lot of a lot of actors have somewhat of a Peter Pan complex, though, is we always have to go tap into that um, that place of of using your imagination to go places that you wouldn't normally go on a daily basis, and it does make you sort of exposed and raw and and, and uh, vulnerable to. The, the hurts of the world, yeah. you know? I think it's, for me, it's a lot of paying attention to what moves my needle. If I find myself laughing at something and I'm like, no one thought that that was as funny as I did. Like, wh what, what about that? I think just being super aware of, you know, what I like and, and why I respond certain ways and, and what doesn't, what is, what is draining or what is shutting me down and what is making me feel like I need to hide and I should hide. And often that's all internal, well, you know, it's an inside job as Lauren Gussis says. So I think, yeah, being super aware and choosing every day. That's, I mean, how do you stay alive? It's sometimes you choose every day. That was, we got one more and you're pointing directly at them. I should go to them now. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Come on up. Oh, oh, hi. Hi. Thing. Hi, what's your name? Isa. Isa, it's so nice to meet you. Do you have a question? Yes. I'm your biggest fan. Really? <laughs> Can I please have a hug? Nice to meet you, Lisa. <laughs> okay, we'll be right here. Yeah. All right. Can we get a round of applause for Lisa? Yeah. Soak it in. Do you need help, honey? There you go. I got your hand. There you go. Do you have a question? Do you have, yeah, do you want to ask her anything or you just wanted to give her a hug? You good? Okay, she's good. She's good. That's exactly how you just were when you saw The Bachelorette. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Was yeah. The exact, you did it. You did it. exact moment. Yeah. Wow. That's true. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Well, except for I, she was very cool and calm and composed. Yeah, I gotta I, say, no I trembled. Offense. Yeah, well, Lisa she definitely held it together. She did it better. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm learning from the well other done. side how to do it better. Uh, I thought I would learn from how Becca handled me, but now I have to learn from how Lisa handled. Me. I think we could all learn a little something from Lisa. That was wonderful. Um, <laughs> Guys, you, you've been a fantastic audience. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you, Lisa, for that moment. That was beautiful. Um, we're going to wrap things up. Because, who's the next guest? I can't remember. Who is it, Debbie? I can't remember. 
Do you, can you even say that? That guy that's your new fiance. <laughs> Oh, that's phenomenal. All right, I'm going to tell you guys one more time, uh, just a reminder, August 10th, okay, Insatiable is going to be on Netflix. Uh, you you got to watch it, I'm telling you right now. Make some noise, please, everybody, for <laughs> Debbie Ryan, Alyssa Milano, Lauren Gussis, and Dallas Roberts. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.